Dingle is part of Detroit automotive aristocracy. She's been a longtime congresswoman from Southeast Michigan, and before that was a senior executive of General Motors. I got to sit down with her a short time ago and talk to her about this big conversion to electric vehicles and the role that the government might have to play in that. Well, it has to come. I mean, you know, we're having a lot of, I mean, I'm wearing green today, just in, you know, the green movement. But we do need to worry about global climate change, and the technology is there. But we've got to build vehicles that consumers are going to buy. And we've got one of the things I worry about in electric vehicles is the fact that the consumers aren't buying them. And I think they're not buying them because consumers don't have confidence that they've got the range that they need. We haven't built the infrastructure. So we've got to work with the utility industry and, by the way, the government to build that infrastructure to support transformation. So that focus on the consumer is fascinating because, as you say, last year it was like 2% of the total vehicles sold. It was up a lot, but it was 2% after all. Uh, what is the chance, risk, that China will really drive this? Because China seems to be deciding as a matter of government, we're going to go to electric vehicles, where we don't have that wherewithal here. But China has decided that that is where yeah. they're going to go. And, but China is also building the infrastructure to support the vehicles. And that's what our problem is right now. People don't have confidence in the electric vehicles. When the Obama fuel efficiency standards were set, we're now in a major issue right now for this industry, as they're doing what we call the mid-cycle review uh, is underway. There was an assumption that there would be a lot more electric vehicles as part of the fleet mix. But you've got to, it's, we are transforming this industry. It's becoming the mobility industry. And we've got to talk about not only electric vehicles, autonomous vehicles, Uber, Lyft. Mobility is changing. And we have to talk about all the platforms that support those mobility changes. You are transforming the industry. And often some China gets broken along that process. And we're seeing it right now. We're seeing GM have one approach, Ford have another approach, because they're going to need a lot of capital in order to invest in that new world. Uh, what can auto companies do to sort of minimize some of the damage along the way? Because there's going to be some pain. Well, there's a lot of pain. And the recent General Motors announcements uh, are an example of people are very upset about the closing of five plants. But you know, at the same time that that was announced, Ford Motor Company told me, and I had been expecting it because they had been preparing me for it, they pulled a shift out of the Flat Rock plant, which is in my district, we talked to every employee before it became public, found another job for them, and Chrysler is moving jobs back into uh, the city of Detroit. You know, we're in a business. You do, as customer demand changes, companies have to meet those new demands. You have to build to meet those new demands. We can't mandate customer, or at least in this country, China can, but this country is not going to let the government mandate consumer choice. Uh, but on the other hand, the workers are a big part of making a company a success. And I think one of the things we're losing in this country is a corporation's responsibility only to its shareholders or is it also to the workers that are making them a success? And what is the government, the Congress, but the government in general in Washington? What is the role? Because as you said, it's not China. We're not going to order everybody to have electric vehicles. But can it be an instigator? Can it be a supporter? Or does it just need to get out of the way? Well, if it gets out of the way, we're not going to get to where we need to go. So, I mean, that's just a reality. I mean, we're not going to get the infrastructure we need to support EVs without all of us working. And right now, you know, any new technology is more expensive at the beginning. So there's been an incentive for people to buy electric vehicles. Some of the companies are, are uh, meeting their caps. I think it's important that we incentivize but not subsidize. So that, to me, is a very important thing that I'm looking at as we figure out what should our policy be. You mentioned infrastructure more than once in connection with electric vehicles. Uh, there is some speculation that with the new majority of Democrats in the House, there could be a deal with Republicans on infrastructure. Could it include, first of all, is it likely we'll get something done? And number two is, could it include, for example, charging stations? I, th I think it has to. I have been very clear and said to my leadership that we're going to only be in the majority for a short time. Oversight is a very important function of government. That's a responsibility. But the American people expect us to deliver. So I think there are two issues that should be at the top of our agenda. One is health care, lowering prescription costs, uh, pre-existing conditions. But the other is an infrastructure bill. We Not only do we have bridges and r roads that are falling down, but we've got to secure our electric good grid. We've got to get these charging stations. We have to keep our waters, update water systems, plumbing systems, sewer systems. There are a lot of issues. It's a 
critical issue for this country. 